First thing, could I just say, just before I give some idea of the, the background to the entire Hitch Black protest and hunger strike period, I would just like to say uh, a big thank you. I'm very, very privileged, privileged and honoured to be here, and uh, I want to thank Jane and the committee for inviting me over here to speak. Uh, in a sense, I feel humbled by the array of speakers that are on the list here for today. There's some very, very prominent people, and when I saw the the list of speakers that we were able to pull together today, I was more than impressed and I've been very honoured to be uh, in their midst, some of whom um, have supported um, uh, justice and freedom in Ireland um, over the last 30, 40 years, and, and some longer than that. Could I just say that um, in terms of the H block protest, I just want to deal with the internal aspects by and large. Uh, there are other speakers here who will deal with, with the, the outside uh, and the politics outside. What I want to say is that in terms of prison protest, if, if this issue had simply been a matter of uh, an internal prison dispute over conditions or for improvement of conditions, it probably would have been resolved in two months. But the result of it was that it lasted from the robbing of uh, political status in 1976, March 1976, and the protest actually physically commenced with the first prisoner to refuse to obey by the criminal regime and wanted to, to go into the political regime in which I was actually housed at the time. And it lasted right through to the end of the hunger strikes in 1981, so it was a five year, very, very harsh and very brutal period. And the, the reason, and the key reason for it, was simply that the British had chosen a battleground to defeat the IRA and to defeat Republican struggle and to damage the morale of the Republican support base and uh, to try and lock up as many activists as possible. And they felt that by criminalizing the struggle, by robbing it of its uh, political identity, that they would then force people away from support. Those of you uh, who will remember at the time a series of documentaries newspaper reports, and uh, the particular slant on the language, you know, Chicago tape shootings, gangsterism, racketeering, all the terminology that the state used to depict us as, uh, all came into play around this mid-70s period. Political status had existed after a hunger strike and a ceasefire or a truce in 1972, and uh, I was actually in the political section. The only reason and uh, Rose has referred to it as well about escapes. The only reason that I ended up in the H blocks and robbed of my political status was for um, one or two failed attempt, uh, escape attempts. I actually escaped from the political section into the non-political section, but um, <laughs> via the punishment block. But uh, that's, that, that's neither here nor there. I was there with everybody else. Now, the British chose the, ba the battlefield to criminalize the struggle and to depoliticize Republican prisoners. They felt that by attacking the soft underbelly of Republican struggle that they could succeed in driving us down and driving us into a corner. And quite frankly, anybody who was about at the time, any activists through the 70, late 75, 76 and the 77 period, uh, it was a hard, hard time. And uh, I mean, the IRA itself ended up in quite a bit of uh, conundrums as to what way to deal with it. Uh, hundreds of prisoners were brought in. There was a conveyor belt system of uh, special interrogation and torture centers. There was special legislation. Uh, there was non-jury, single judge, the black court systems. There was the acceptance of very, very tainted evidence. And uh, the whole array of state apparatus that was used to put people in prison, uh, forced confessions, uh, and all the rest of it. The first prisoner to resist this criminalization and to refuse to accept the criminal tag of the criminal uniform was a prisoner called Kieran Nugent. Uh, sadly, he's recently deceased a number of years back. And he refused to wear the criminal uniform and do the forced labor that they wanted us to do. He wanted, like the rest of us, to have our education system, to have our association with other uh, political prisoners. and. Uh, to have our command structures, to have our own clothes, to engage in all our recreation activities, as existed in the prison at the time. 
in the compound system akin to the Second World War type listen hut accommodation. So when uh, he refused to obey by the criminal regime, he was stripped and put into a cell with no facilities, nothing, absolutely nothing at all, no stimulation, no books, no reading material, no radios, no outlet whatsoever, all visits refused, um, and he was forced to wear a blanket. And this is why it, it came about as the blanket protest of, uh, which, which commenced in 1976. Now, as, as other prisoners came in, some of them very young, we had prisoners in there between 16 years of age, and I know that um, I think Jane and Oros both referred to the prisoners being very young. The, the eldest of the hunger strikers was Joe McDonnell at, at 30 years of age, and there was a prisoner across the wing from me in 1978 who was 16 years of age. Um, there was another one, Kieran Fleming, who was killed in an SAS ambush after the escape, came in when he was 16. So, I mean, this is the type of life that uh, mostly teenagers coming into their early 20s were faced with, uh, involved in struggle. We also had uh, women comrades in Armagh prison who were also on protest for political status. Now, what happened was the brutality of the regime set about trying to physically break people to get them to conform to the criminal regime and to depoliticize. The resistance built up slowly but surely, numbers increased. I was one of the people in the cages with uh, people like Jerry Adams at the time, and we were involved in, 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 in reading up on counterinsurgency, Brit strategy. We, we actually studied Kitson and, and all this sort of stuff. But we were looking very, very closely at the criminalization campaign that being waged by the British. And uh, we were able then to, to help sort of uh, bring information outside. And yet, 50 yards away across the wall, people were being brutalized, naked in cells with uh, no facilities whatsoever. So, as the numbers built up, the brutality increased. And, uh, you know, some of it was very, very harsh. And uh, I know Rose has, has referred to being in there uh, on, on a visit uh, a couple of years back. We are able to get on out of the place, and uh, readily, uh, the authorities at this stage will readily admit that uh, some pretty awful things happened in there. But it was hard and it was harsh, and uh, the reason that it lasted for such a long time, and that it did go to a hunger strike, was because the political ramifications of success or failure, that's both for the British and for us, were absolutely huge. You know, uh, they had said, the battleground, we were left with no option but to respond to it. There, there, there was no other option for us. We, we couldn't choose the, the battlefield to fight. So we had to respond, and the manner in which we, we reacted was um, to protest and to refuse to be criminalized, and it took this, this course of action. And through 1978, when the No Wise protest started, on the back of uh, quite a number of prisoners being brutalized when they were going out to showers or out to the toilets. We ended up on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week lockup, and the, the, the conditions deteriorated to the extent that we had to pour the urine at the windows and the excrement at the windows uh, until they boarded up the windows and put wire grills on them, and then the urine had to go out the door, under the doors, and the excrement went around the walls. And people have seen examples of this, have seen photographs, and, and anybody who has seen the film Hunger, which was uh, released two or three years ago, is a very, very adequate uh, description and depiction of exactly what happened, the brutality, uh, the inhuman, the inhumane regime that existed 